This specialization does not study cell electrochemistry in detail, but understanding the causes and effects of cell aging, how they fail, and what that means to your application has real value when thinking about battery management system algorithms. For example, it motivates the need for state of health estimation algorithms and also for computing power limits in order to slow down degradation. There are many possible causes of failures in lithium ion battery cells, and these include things like design faults and poorly controlled manufacturing processes, or some normal aging mechanisms, or some abnormal aging or degradation due to uncontrolled operations and abuse. Battery management systems can't do very much about the first two, about design faults or manufacturing faults. Uh, it's too late to worry about them because the battery, manu battery management system is using cells that are already manufactured and already in this product. Um, so they can protect against some, uh, some safety events, but they can't really do anything proactive at this point. However, it is possible, in some cases, even compensate for other causes of failure of the battery cells. And so in this lesson, we're going to look at what are the normal lithium ion aging processes. And in the next lesson, we'll look at some abnormal causes due to abuse. Lithium ion cell performance generally deteriorates gradually over time due to unwanted chemical reactions that happen inside the cell and also due to physical changes to the active materials in this cell. We already know about the desired chemical reaction where lithium exits one electrode and enters into the electrolyte and then into the other electrode and vice versa when charging and discharging the cell. However, there are other chemical reactions that happen inside the cell that we do not desire to happen. And you've seen one of them already, which we learned about in the last lesson, was the formation of an SEI layer due to a side reaction between the solvent in the electrolyte and the graphite particles in the negative electrode. The processes that result in aging are usually not reversible, and they eventually result in the cell reaching a point where it's no longer considered capable of performing its duty in an application. So we look at a few example causes. One general mechanism of aging is known as corrosion. Corrosion is a really a generic term that talks about any undesired chemical reaction that takes place with the environment. Corrosion can refer to corrosion of the current collectors in the cells, for example, when the current collectors react with the electrolyte. It can also refer to corrosion of the electrode active materials when they react with the electrolyte. Corrosion in general will consume some of the active chemicals of the cell and lead to increased impedance and usually also to capacity loss. Now, corrosion in a lithium ion battery cell is fairly difficult to visualize, so I include a photograph of something that we see more commonly in everyday life as an illustration. In this case, we can see that a metal chain is undergoing an undesired chemical reaction with its environment, which is forming this rust layer on top of the chain on the surface. This layer of rust can eventually cause the chain to fail. And similarly, corrosion in a lithium ion battery cell can eventually cause the cell to fail. Another process of degradation is known as crystal formation. You have learned already that the electrode active materials are built from crystal structures in small particles. Crystal structures have a tendency to grow over time and to join together forming larger crystals. Remember that we desire these small particles in the electrodes in order to achieve large effective surface area so that a cell can carry a high level of electrical current or of, of power. But when small particles merge together to form larger particles, the effective surface area of the electrode is reduced. And when we reduce this effective surface area, we reduce the amount of current that can flow in the cell. And in some cases, we can even isolate some parts of the electrode from the electrically conductive path, and so we lose, lose some storage capacity. 
Now again, the photograph on this slide is not one of a lithium ion battery cell, but it does show the formation of crystals, in this case of ice crystals. I've included this photograph because it's something that all of us can relate to a little bit more easily than crystal formation in a battery cell because probably all of us have seen ice crystals form over time. And it's a very similar idea to what is happening inside the battery cell, except there we have crystals of positive electrode materials forming, um, for example, over time. Another process of aging has to do with something called dendrite growth. This is similar in a way to crystal formation, but in crystal formation we're usually thinking about the active materials themselves somehow merging together and forming larger crystals. When we're talking about dendrites, we're talking about growth of undesirable crystals that are not the active materials. Uh, so for example, it's possible if I try to charge a battery cell at too high a rate or too cold a temperature for lithium metal to, instead of intercalating in the negative electrode, to actually smash onto the surface of the negative electrode and plate lithium metal onto the surface of the electrode particles. And once this metal annealing site is present on the surface of the particle, it's simpler for other metals to attach to it. And overall, the metals grow into these tree-like uh, structures that look very similar to what's shown on this photograph. Now, once again, this photograph is of ice crystals because I don't have a handy photograph of lithium dendrites. But the lithium dendrites do tend to look similar to this of lithium forming these really thin tree-like structures that can penetrate through the separator of the battery cell and make an electrical connection between positive and negative electrodes, causing a short circuit and causing cell failure. So this is a really uh, possibly very dangerous degradation mechanism. Another process of aging is when we lose chemicals required for the battery cell to operate through evaporation. Uh, this is very common for cells made of different chemistries, for example, lead acid battery cells, because the water in the solvent, um, or that is the solvent in the electrolyte, can decompose into hydrogen and oxygen gases when the cell is fully charged. And then these gases can escape through small openings or large openings in the packaging, and so the electrolyte can dry out. Uh, this results in increased resistance of the battery cell and ultimately in failure of this cell. Uh, chemical loss through evaporation is perhaps less common with lithium ion battery cells, but it can still happen. Uh, if, for example, the lithium ion cell is overcharged or over discharged, the electrolyte can break down and form gases, including hydrogen gas and methane gas and others. If the packaging of the cell is somehow compromised, these gases can then escape. And even if it's not compromised, these gases generally do not recombine to form the electrolyte and its solvents. And so the lithium ion battery cell can dry out over time when that results in increased resistance of the cell. Another process of aging is known as passivation. And you've learned about one type of passivation, which is the formation of an SEI film layer. Uh, this film layer is known as a passivation layer because uh, when it forms on the surface of the negative electrode particle, it impedes the further formation of SEI layer, and so it passivates or isolates that layer from, um, from more chemical reactions. Uh, however, if the SEI layer is somehow dissolved or cracked, then SEI will form where fresh graphite has been exposed, and so the SEI, even though it is formed uh, in, during the first charging cycle, it does tend to gradually grow over time. I really liked this photograph to illustrate film formation because it shows a film that has to do with aging. Another aging process that we might see has to do with the development of an internal short circuit inside of the cell. A lithium ion cell that appeared acceptable when it was new, or might have been marginally acceptable when it was new, may have contained some latent invisible defect that becomes apparent only as the aging process unfolds over time. 
there might have been a poor cell construction or contamination or some metal sharp edges called burrs on the current collectors and over time because of the stresses and strains of each charging and discharging cycle these uh, wear their way through the separator and lead to some contact between the electrodes through this separator and that of course is a very dangerous situation with a short circuit that could be re result in a fire. A final process of aging that we think about has to do with electrode or electrolyte cracking. Some lithium ion battery cells use a solid material for their electrolyte, which is some plastic like lithium polymer material. And over time, this solid electrolyte can crack due to stresses and strains. And that can cause resistance of the cell to increase because it's not possible for that part of the separator to conduct ions any longer. Uh, it can even cause short circuits if the crack is large enough to allow the negative and positive electrodes to contact each other. The electrode structures themselves, as you know, are held together with binders and have conductive agents added to improve their electronic conductivity. And over time, the stresses and strains of charging and discharging can also lead to cracking of these binders and making the overall electrode structures brittle. And this brittleness of the electrode can cause some of the particles to become electrically disconnected so that even though they're still perfectly capable of holding lithium, there's no way for the compensating electron to make it to the outside circuit. And so you lose that capacity and end up also increasing resistance of the cells. It's helpful to have some idea of the aging mechanisms and to understand why they age and why they degrade and why they don't last forever. But what is the net result of any one of these, these aging mechanisms? So one result is increased internal impedance. As larger crystals form, the effective surface area of the electrode is reduced. This increases impedance. When films form on the electrode particles, then it's harder for the ions to get into and out of the particles, and so the impedance increases. When electrolyte is lost or when current collectors are corroded and so forth, it makes it harder for either electrons to move or for ions to move, and therefore there is increased impedance or increased resistance of your cell. A second undesirable effect is reduced capacity. When the active materials disintegrate or deteriorate, they lose vacancies that could have held lithium. Or we could lose charge carriers uh, from the electrolyte when side reactions occur. Uh, in some battery chemistries, this is partially recoverable through reconditioning the cell using one or more deep discharges, but this is not the case in most lithium ion chemistries. A third effect of aging in cells is manifested in an increased rate of self-discharge. As electrodes swell, that increases the pressure on the separator and as a consequence increases, uh, decreases the resistance of the separator and can lead to increased self-discharge rates. Any one of the aging processes is, is usually accelerated by higher temperatures and aging processes uh, that result are not necessarily noticed right away. There's a rule of thumb that says batteries die in the summer, but you hold the funeral in the winter. The aging mechanism that caused the failure was probably accelerated by the hot temperatures in the summer, but the hot temperature also results in a lower cell resistance, as you'll learn about in the second course in the specialization. Cell resistances are usually lower at warm temperatures and higher at cold temperatures. So even though the effective resistance of the cell is increasing due to these aging properties, you don't notice it because you're operating in a region where the resistance is temporarily lower because of the temperature. It's only in winter when the cold temperatures cause the overall resistance uh, of the cell to rise that you realize that the resistance this winter is a lot higher than the resistance was last winter and that this cell has actually failed. So to summarize this lesson, you've learned that it can be valuable to understand the causes of aging and it's important at least to motivate the need for state of health algorithms and for being able to compute power limits in such a way that avoids degradation as much as possible and we will discuss that later in the specialization. 
you've learned that some of the causes of cell aging at the internal level have to do with corrosion and crystal formation and dendrite formation and growth and chemical loss and passivation and shorted cells and electrode and electrolyte cracking. You've also learned that some of the effects of aging are manifested as an increased resistance and a decreased capacity, which are known as power fade and capacity fade, and also at an accelerated rate of self-discharge of the cells. So that summarizes the normal causes of aging, obviously at a fairly shallow level. We'll talk a little bit more about them in the fourth course of this specialization. But now we're going to move on in the next lesson to talk about some abnormal causes of aging.